Hello guys, welcome to SWK Tutorials. In this tutorial, we will learn image based lighting in 3ds Max using V-Day 6. Means, we will not model any environment for this image, sorry, for this object. Instead, we will use V-Day Dome Light, HDRI and V-Day Shadow Catcher to light this object as if it is in an environment and create a photorealistic result. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now guys, the first thing that you should do for image based lighting is to download an HDRI image. There are a lot of websites on the internet to download HDRI. You can download it from any site, it's up to you, but my personal favorite is Polyheaven. After that, you have to go to the browse HDRI and choose the HDRI that you want. Currently, I will be using this HDRI for this tutorial. I am using it in 4K HDR and simply I will click here to download it. The best thing that I like about this website, I don't have to make any account. It's I just have to simply click it and it just give me the HDRI. Now guys, this HDRI will do few things. First of all, it will light your object. Second, it will create reflections on your object and third, it will work as an environment for us. Now our HDRI is downloaded. So we will go here. The second step is to create a V-Day dome light. Now after creating the V-Day dome light, just adjust it first in the center like this. Later you can change the position. Now guys, come here and render it. You can see currently the render is too dark. So I will go to modify panel and I will change my intensity multiplier. Since I'm using the V-Ray physical camera, I know normally 30 is the very good value if you are using V-Ray physical camera. Now, my light is all good. Till now, it's all white and it's creating white reflections. But if you look, the render is not realistic. It's looking very dull because I'm just lighting it as a white light. Now, after creating the V-Ray dome light and adjusting its multiplier, you have to click here and then you have to click on V-Ray bitmap. Remember in V-Ray 5 and V-Ray 6, you have to use V-Ray bitmap. In previous versions, it was V-Ray HDRI, but now it is called V-Ray bitmap. You have to double click here and you have to browse your HDRI. You have downloaded it. Now, the moment I downloaded my HDRI, you can see, I can see it in my render. But definitely the position of the HDRI is not good right now. Before you start uh, changing the position of your HDRI, if you are like me, who like to use interactive rendering. So you should do one thing. You have to click on render setup and lock your camera. This is the V-Ray camera 01, V-Ray camera 01 here. I will lock it like this so that my camera doesn't change when I come on these views. Now guys, I will start rotating my HDRI by rotating the dome light. See, I'm rotating my dome light, but my HDRI is not rotating. To fix this issue, you have to do one thing. You have to click on lock texture to icon. The moment you click on lock texture to icon and you start rotating your HDRI, sorry, you start rotating your dome light. You can see your HDRI is also rotating. So to rotate the HDRI using the dome light, you have to click on lock texture to icon. So this value is working nice for me. I like it like this. Now guys, I just want to show you one thing. In the previous versions of V-Ray, there was an issue. And the issue was this, if I come here, and I zoom out my car. You can see that my car is 
getting smaller but my environment is not getting smaller means in the previous versions the car and the environment doesn't match when you move the camera but thanks to vr6 this problem has been solved now to solve this issue you can click on the finite dome the moment you click on the finite dome you can see the dome the hdri is also moving with your car your object so this is the first advantage of vr6 if you are not using vr6 you just you should update it after that whenever you click on finite dome there are few parameters that get enabled you can see first they were locked the moment i click on the finite dome they are on the first one is radius it's a radius of your hdri or you can say your dome light now if i increase it from let's say 100 to 200 you can see it is getting bigger now if i increase it to 250 you can see it's getting more big so guys this is the first thing that i have done, that i have did i have increased my building uh, according to my need after adjusting the radius you have to do another thing and it's called projection height now what will this do just look here for just projection height if i start increasing my projection height it is currently 50 let's increase it to 70 you can see the building is everything is going up so i will try to guess the height of the person that has taken this shot so or you can simply say i will try to adjust the height of my ground according to my object so i think this is going up like 70 or 80 is not solving my issue so i will start decreasing it 60 50 40 now it's getting better 30 yeah now it's getting better this is something that i like it's good even if you, if i want i can decrease it a little bit more 25 even you see the moment i am decreasing it these stones are also getting smaller on 50 you can see they are extremely big that's something i don't like it according to my tiles uh, so i will decrease it to let's say 30 now it's all on your personal taste after the projection height there is one more parameter ground blend i don't play with it too much what does it do if i increase its value to 1 you can see it's making the ground if i take it out like this you can see it's making the ground round if i take it to 0.5 it is flattening the ground if i take it to 0 you can see it is just making it sharp so default value is 0.2 what i do normally i just play between 0 to 0.2 and i normally find my result to be okay in this case i will take it to 0.1 okay guys now i am happy with my background environment and my size of my stones and everything the only thing that i don't like and you can you can also see is that it's look like the car is flying in the air so just simply save your render into the history and now to create shadows simply go to vray plane click here and create a plane like this after that make sure your vray plane is selected click on make vray shadow catcher and now you can see shadows in your car it's look like the car is on the ground so it guys it's so simple you just have to use few settings and you can simply 
make an object render in an environment very quickly. You can see guys, previously without the VDA shadow catcher and after the VDA shadow catcher. It's look like that the car is right now in the air and now it's all okay. So guys, I hope you like this tutorial. If you like it, give it a like. If you love it, subscribe to my channel, share my videos, keep creating guys. Bye bye.